welcome to another Monday live or recorded um, wherever you are in the world. I am just grateful to have you. Today is an extra special video and the reason why today is so special is because this topic is specifically on request from the Galactic Federation. Um, they really usually don't request specific topics. The last time they requested a specific topic was uh, beginning of 2020 when they essentially disclosed themselves to my community and kind of to the world. Um, so this is the next specific requested video from the Galactic Federation today. So hang on to your seats because it is going to be jam-packed and probably longer than most of my videos. My intention for today's video, I guess the Galactic Federation's intention for today's video is to give you information that is going to help you understand your position on planet Earth and help you wake up to the fact that you are not only just a star seed, but you're a galactic volunteer. Um, because we're going to actually go through the process of what it is as a soul to not only join the Galactic Federation of Light, but then to choose to volunteer to come to planet Earth. So this is supposed to, I guess, ignite some sort of divine cosmic spark in you. That's kind of the intention. So like I said, it's going to be a big one. Uh, if you want to take notes, go ahead. But this might be one that you want to rewatch. And by the end of this video, I am also going to go over all of the different types of soul missions that uh, you would have signed up for coming upon coming to planet Earth. I really had no idea what to call this video. I stumbled over a lot of different titles and I still don't think I got it right. So that's essentially what we're going through today. It's pretty jam packed. Um, and definitely stay tuned till the end to really figure out what your mission is as a galactic volunteer, as a starseed on planet Earth. Whew. And of course, as always, be sure to smash the subscribe button. I feel so weird uh, saying that. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you do like the content and be sure to share the video to other star seeds, old souls and galactic volunteers that you think are out there, friends, family members or what have you. Okay, so let's just start. There's two steps essentially going from being a cosmic being, uh, interdimensional being out there in the universe all the way to, um, to planet Earth. So step one is joining the Galactic Federation. And... <laughs> all right. So in order to join the Galactic Federation, you are either recruited or you apply for the position. Um, so no matter what your background is, you're able to apply. I have channeled many different interdimensional lifetimes, not just my own, but of clients as well. And the process is usually always the same. Either the Galactic Federation will come to you wherever you are on whatever planet or whatever spaceship you are in the universe. And they will say, hey, you have a specific expertise and we would really love to have you on our team. And then they recruit you. Or you're like, oh my goodness, I feel stuck on this planet and I'm, 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 existing for something greater and I really want to join a community of like-minded individuals who are here to fight for uh, universal truth or universal laws. Um, so therefore I want to join the Galactic Federation. Um, and yeah, so you can apply. Not everyone gets in, but you can apply. And typically individuals who have kind of larger than life ideologies, um, people who really want to give back, not just on planet Earth. I'm talking about being an interdimensional being and joining the Galactic Federation. The only real thing that you will always be turned down for within the Galactic Federation is uh, a criminal background or a criminal history. So believe it or not, you actually can have a criminal history um, as an interdimensional being, and the Galactic Federation are fully well aware of what kind of criminal history you have, and it would be crimes against the universe. So essentially, if you have some sort of criminal history, you will not be accepted into the Galactic Federation right away. 
once you've got a clean criminal history, um, then you kind of go to the next level, the, the next step. So both your genetics and your frequency are tested very rigorously. Um, actually, the Galactic Federation is known for having some of the highest and the toughest standard testing in the universe. Okay, now, now remember, if you've never really heard of the Galactic Federation again uh, before, it's just an organization of interdimensional beings who have the intention of unity or essentially aligning to the universal laws um, it, within this universe. And then they kind of make it their duty to um, ensure that other beings across the universe also align to universal law. Um, a really good example of a universal law is the law of non-intervention, which basically states that no being can interact um, with another being and uh, force them to do anything against their will, right? Every being in this universe has free will and it needs to be respected, essentially. So the two testing that a being will go through in order to be accepted into the Galactic Federation is frequency testing and genetic testing. <clears throat> so with frequency testing, um, I've seen it before. I've seen them test different beings before because way back in the day, I was curious and asked all these questions like, how do you even join the Galactic Federation? And so essentially what it looks like is, and I'm sure each ship has different technology, but what I saw was a room and it almost looked like some sort of like geometric diamond shaped room, but with a flat top and a flat bottom. And it, so it wasn't very big. And the only thing that I could relate it to would be uh, some sort of immersive uh, 3D virtual reality video game kind of situation room and basically the being sits in this room and they are fed either a series of questions usually telepathically or in their native language um, and then they'll also be um, they will also be tested with stimuli is the word that comes through and stimuli could be um, utilizing the senses it could be visual and this would t essentially test their frequency. So think of kind of like a lie detector test, but like on steroids. And so it's really important that whoever gets joins the Galactic Federation has a very specific type of frequency and energy. And it's not necessarily high frequency. It's just a frequency that has high integrity and high morality. That's essentially what they're testing for. So if you if if you answer a question and says, you know, do you truly have the best interest of the entire universe involved when you make certain decisions? And you say, yes, I really do have the best interest in my heart. And yet your frequency or the, this frequency device or meter or testing thing, um, it will detect that being not necessarily a lie, like you're not consciously saying yes and you mean no, but energetically there is there is a higher probability within you to to lie or to uh, manipulate or to not necessarily have everyone's best interest at heart. So that's the frequency testing that you have to go through as any galactic being, okay, there's no discrimination. You could be any being in the entire universe. And when you want to join up the Galactic Federation, you essentially have to pass the frequency test. And then there's also other things that they do with that reporting. Um, the next testing, which is really interesting, is actually genetic testing. Now, once again, there's no discrimination. So you could have any sort of genetics. But specifically why they test genetics is because each species or hybrid species have um, specific DNA or genetic capabilities. Like, for example, the greys or certain subspecies of grey are highly intelligent, almost like their brains are a quantum computer. Great. So the position that they would be best suited in is quantum computing. Um, <laughs> and I've seen certain job titles like that. And, and utilizing their genetics in a very specific way. So the genetic testing is more so related to what position is going to be best suited for them. And then the frequency testing, same thing. It's 
who are you as a being, kind of in your personality trait, your reactions, um, and, and what specific area are you going to be best in based on your frequency? So not only can they tell, are you suited for the Galactic Federation because you have that baseline integrity and morality, but where within the Galactic Federation would you be suited for? Once again, every single being who wants to join the Galactic Federation of Light has to go through this rigorous testing, okay? Um, which I think is just fascinating. Like, I love systems and the way that systems function and work. Once you are tested both genetically and within your frequency, um, you are presented with around three to five different career or job options. That being said, not everyone who gets tested and who wants to join the Galactic Federation is accepted. And that's not just a criminal record thing. It's once again, it's based on morality and integrity. You could say, I'm a really good person, but when you're tested, maybe your reactions aren't as genuine as you think they are. And that's okay. You can always reapply. And there are beings who have reapplied and reapplied and reapplied, sometimes for lifetimes, to try and get into the Galactic Federation. Um, so it is, it is quite an honor to be a part of the Galactic Federation. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Right, three to five different options. But there's usually the number one option that the GFL will say, this is where we absolutely see you and this is where we need you the most. And typically beings who are presented with those options will take the number one option that the Galactic Federation gives them as far as what their mission, their role, or their job title is. And um, they will be shipped all across this universe to different star systems, um, galaxies for that specific role. So you could come from anywhere in the universe and be shipped to literally anywhere to work for the Galactic Federation. It is a universal organization and there are many other names that it goes by. Um, so try not to get too caught up in the name Galactic Federation. There are other kind of names and even smaller organizations under the big organization of the Galactic Federation. Um, yeah, so usually beings will just take the first suggestion because the testing is so rigorous. It's like, um, it's kind of like a career test that we we all kind of took in back in high school, which was ridiculous, by the way. I don't think any of us are actually in the career that we were tested for. It's like that, but once again, like to the next level, which is pretty cool. And, and I want to say, side note, as a human, sometimes wouldn't it just be easier to get tested in all of the ways? What are your physical, biological capabilities and what are your frequency capabilities? And just to put, be put into the right job, like, um, I will say, that being said, if a being has these suggestions, they don't have to take them. It's very rare that this happens because usually usually the testing puts them into not just the right position for them biologically, but the right position for them like as a mission, as a, you know, as something that they really believe in. But every once in a while, if if you don't feel set in your position, you can always go to a council and ask for a reposition. Maybe it's testing again, maybe it's suggestions, maybe it's a conversation. Um, but there's always like, once again, they're, they're super against taking away your free will. So uh, it's really the power is always up to that individual. Okay. So uh, like I was mentioning, many individuals are rejected uh, who want to join the Galactic Federation specifically for the morality and integrity. You just have to meet a certain standard. And to be honest, it's just you just have to be really like an authentic being. <laughs> It's, it's not crazy high standards. You just really have to, to know that you want to help out authentically and that you're going to put others before yourself. Okay, so step two, once you have joined the Galactic Federation, and I want to mention that a lot of you, I don't know the majority, but probably the majority within this community at this time, um, are connected with the Galactic Federation. And we're actually going to get into 
why star seeds on planet Earth are most likely connected to the Galactic Federation. So all of this information should be resonating with you at one level or another. Once you have joined the Galactic Federation, and one more thing before I, before I continue, most of you joined the GFL like a long, 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 long time ago. Okay, just that's it. I'm done with that. All right, step two is an, becoming an Earth volunteer. How do you go from living your dream life <laughs> and being in your dream career based on your soul's vibration and your genetic capabilities to, to this, to being a human and kind of being stuck here? How, why? Why? I think we all want to know why. <laughs> why would we do that to ourselves? All right. But also it's beautiful and the food's pretty good too, so... <laughs> There's pros. All right. So um, most of Earth's starseeds are Galactic Federation volunteers. Not just anyone is able to interact with Earth. This is an important point. Not just any being out there in the universe is able to just interact with us. The species, the being, the intention, all of it has to align with Earth's contracts in order for beings to interact with us. So a good example is many different species in the past have interacted with human beings because they were contracted to uh, splice their genetics with our genetics. And so they were within Earth's contracts. Unfortunately, many of the beings that are currently interacting with humans um, who do not have our best interest in mind are also a part of Earth's contracts because we are here to learn light and darkness. And it's kind of like this mastery skill we have to, to really learn and, and really remember. Um, anyway, so once again, not just anyone is able to interact with Earth. And that's because Earth is considered a profit planet. Okay, This planet is a part of a really big prophecy, a Galactic Federation prophecy. Um, now, Earth is not the only prophet planet. There are actually many prophecy planets out there in the universe. Now, the difference between a prophecy planet and just a regular old planet is that, how do I say this? Oh, I think I wrote it down. Yes, right. Um, I did write it down. The evolution of Earth and humans has a big impact on the universe. So it's highly monitored. So prophecy planets in general, whatever goes down, whatever happens on that prophecy planet impacts the universe in a very specific way. So the way that things progress on said prophecy planet is very highly monitored and very quite specifically needing to be aligned to the contracts. There's a lot of other planets that don't have as much of an impact. So if they're going down their path and collectively they're like, mm, let's just destroy it, <laughs> then it doesn't necessarily impact as many other planets and beings and civilizations and the universe as a whole. Planet Earth, whatever we choose, has a massive impact out there. So we're considered a prophecy planet. So it's kind of, it's restricted. It's monitored. Believe it or not, it kind of seems like... <laughs> It kind of seems like whatever goes here, but it's not true. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Okay. So you're part of, you just, you, you got accepted into the Galactic Federation. You've been working in your job for a while. Then you learn about planet Earth. You learn about Earth as a prophecy planet. Um, you're interested. So you apply. You do have to apply to come to planet Earth. And it's the exact same process as joining the Galactic Federation. Either you were recruited to come to planet Earth or you applied to come to planet Earth. And as simple as that distinction sounds, it is a very big distinction. There's a because I promise you the entire undertone of your human life depends on if you were recruited or if you decided you wanted to volunteer here. Now, either way, you're a volunteer. Um, and we're going to get to that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so after you're either recruited to say, hey, your skills are specifically needed for planet Earth, 
Or if you're like, wow, I heard about this prophecy plan and I want to be a part of it. Either way, more testing um, happens specifically for your Earth contracts. You're already a part of the Galactic Federation. You already have integrity and high moral standards. You want to help out. You want to come to planet Earth or you're just needed. And then you get tested again. And the testing is how do your interdimensional skills and even past life skills as other ET beings now apply to being a human? Right? <laughs> And then, and then you form your earth contracts around that testing. Um, after the testing, woohoo, there is training. Yay. Now, I will say that earth training, okay, earth school is only a relatively new addition. And the first, the first couple of waves of volunteers to come to planet earth were not trained at all. <laughs> which also, unfortunately, has a huge impact <laughs> on the soul. And we're going to get to, are you new here or are, have you been here for a while? I'm actually going to tell you today if this is your last lifetime on planet Earth or if this is your first life on planet Earth. You will know by the end of this video. So hang on. So after the testing, and it's like, this is your soul contract, there's training, you get trained. Nowadays, like, luckily, there is training. So, hey, like, this is what it's like to be a human. This is what's going on on planet Earth. And this is basically how you can help. Um, a really good example of this Earth training is they will hook you up. Once again, these days, they did not do this in the past. Big mistake. They essentially hook you up to, once again, kind of like a virtual reality video game type of machine. And you will go through different simulations. And these simulations are, in fact, different human lifetimes that have been lived by other souls so that you can observe and learn and, um, and also not carry karma from those experiences. They didn't have that in the past. <laughs> All right. Um, so... A lot of recruited starseeds are tired and resentful. I'm going to repeat that. A lot of recruited starseeds are tired and resentful, which means you were asked to be here probably a long time ago. A lot of the volunteer starseeds are blocked and confused. So the recruited starseeds have this underlying energy of, like, I got dragged into this shithole. And I'm resentful for that. And I can't believe I'm still here. <laughs> so, sorry to be so crass, but like, that's kind of the vibe. Um, the star seeds who volunteered, who have also been here for quite some time, they're blocked because there's a lot of karma to sort out. And also blocked in the way of like, I came here and I was so excited and I wanted to help and I wanted to make an impact. But I haven't been really able to make an impact. And now I'm really confused as to why I'm even here because I wanted to be here, but no one seems to care. <laughs> it's like, I really wanted to change things, but like, yeah, they're not ready to be changed. So recruited, tired and resentful, volunteer, blocked and confused. All right. Now let's get into your Starseed Earth mission. This is where it gets really good. Um, if you have a pen and paper, write it down. If not, maybe just re-listen to this section or the video as a whole, or you can find this information in my book as well. You're not dying, you're just waking up. If you have not already read it or listened to the Audible or read it on Kindle or whatever, um, it's such a quick listen. It's such a great read. It's very light, but highly packed with information, kind of like this video. We're 20 minutes in and it's like, it's been a lot of information. So here are the different Starseed Earth missions. Remember how if you wanted to come to planet Earth, you would get tested to see where you would fit in? This is what would come through. Okay, first Earth mission is the mission of a healer. Healers are here to heal. I mean, obviously. Um, now with every earth mission there is there's two sides of the mission 
One side is what you're here to give planet Earth, and the other side is what you're here to receive from planet Earth. Now, I will say that some of you, typically star seeds, will sign up for one main Earth mission. There are others, a much smaller percentage of you, will sign up for all of the Earth missions, <laughs> which means like it's a lot, it's very diverse, and it's like way more complex, essentially. So once again, healers are here to heal. So the energy is maybe you're a nurse, maybe you're um, a special ed teacher, maybe you're an energy healing practitioner, maybe you're a yoga practitioner. You have always been drawn to healing. You've always been drawn to healing arts. Um, you could be a herbalist, right? Like, you know, you don't even have to do healing for a living in order to have the role of a healer. The problem with being a healer is that you get imbalanced often because you give too much of yourself. Yes, I know you know that. Um, so your lesson, what you're here to receive, is learning balance between giving and receiving. Your mission is healing in whatever capacity, and your lesson is balance. Balance between giving and receiving. Cool. All right. Next Starseed Earth mission is teacher. So... Once again, pretty obvious, but I'll say it. The teacher is here to teach, and it could be in any capacity. It could be spiritual teaching, philosophical teaching. You could be a, um, a grocery bagger and still be a teacher. Like, you don't have to be a teacher for a living. You don't have to do any of these things for a living. As a matter of fact, most of your Starseed Earth missions are, like, happening behind the scenes, which is frustrating because we just want to align and do for a living um, what we're here to do for the planet. And most of the time, it's just not usually that simple, which is fine because you're still doing the thing that you're here to do. <laughs> we have to remind ourselves of that often. Okay, so once again, as a teacher, your sole mission, teaching, here to teach. And then what you need to learn is to be a student how to learn how to receive information and input and change and get challenged and grow through being a student and not just always being the teacher. And I break all of these down way more into personality traits and, and all of that great stuff. So next, uh, in my book, sorry, I break it all down intensely in my book, <laughs> but not here. We don't have time. All right. Next Earth Starseed mission is the pillar. I really love pillars. So pillars are here to hold space. And um, typically uh, individuals who have a really active mission where they're giving a lot will have a pillar as a partner. So I find that a lot of women, especially who are healers, have pillars as husbands. They're usually calm, cool, quiet, collected. Um, they don't really have the maybe empathic kind of connection that you have. Um, and they're just here to help you ground and hold space. And they're here to hold space for other people, the planet, the change, the shift, all of that. They're, they're really good and they're super needed. And the pillar is here to learn vulnerability. Of course, as a space holder, what are you here to learn the most is being held every once in a while. <laughs> All right. Next star Starseed Earth mission is uh, Light Warrior. Light. Oh, sorry. Yes, Light Warrior. Light Warrior. So the Light Warrior is essentially working a double shift. Typically, you could have any role, any job as a human and still be a Light Warrior. Um, light Warriors can be very, like strong and confident and assertive and really like know what they want and they don't take shit from anyone um, typically, but it could totally vary. Light warriors are always called into action at night and they do a lot of the etheric battles. Okay. They do a lot of the astral battles. So you may wake up feeling super exhausted and you're like, I just slept eight hours. How do I feel this tired? And it's because you were literally fighting in your sleep all night. Okay, so um, there's not a whole lot of light warriors, but uh, yeah, they're super badass and I appreciate their their work. Light warriors are here to just enjoy the simplicity of being human. A lot of light warriors have very, very simple human lives because their <laughs> their lives behind the scenes are, are not as simple. So uh, next Starseed Earth mission is grid worker, grid worker. 
So a grid worker tends to actually travel a lot. They love traveling around the world. They're specifically drawn to um, history and ancient sites, but not always necessarily. Um, but yeah, a lot of travel. And uh, grid workers just end up at the right place at the right time to clear the energy there. You don't even need to know that you are clearing energy in order to just show up at the right place, most likely a portal or a vortex, and clear the energy there. There are a lot of grid workers who live in cities, like really big cities like New York and Los Angeles, because um, big cities like that are centered around vortexes and portals. And so grid workers are specifically drawn to these cities in order to help clear and maintain the grid energy there. Um, uh, grid workers are also typically very drawn and connected to Mother Gaia or nature because, once again, it's kind of the flow, the rhythm, the connection of nature. Um, grid workers need to learn grounding. Of course, you're always out of your body. Um, so maybe you're very clumsy. You drop things or you're, you're, you stub your toes or whatever. Um, once again, just to learn to be grounded. Uh, okay, next Starseed Earth mission is the satellite. So the satellite is an individual. Once again, you probably don't know that you're doing this at all. But what you're doing is you are sending and receiving information um, all the time. So it can be also a very behind the scenes job and a very exhausting job, especially when there's a lot of transmissions that are needed. Typically, these people, the satellites, are very information based and they love seeking out knowledge. Um, and what else? Um, oh, yeah. So satellites need to learn how to feel rather than think. They're very much in here, not enough in here. All right. We've got two more. So the star, the next Starseed Earth mission is the Rebel. I freaking love Rebels so much. I totally have part of this Rebel spirit in me. And um, these are the individuals that are contracted to stand up and say no. They are the change makers. They are the ones who are on the street protesting and they feel very, very um, passionate about justice and injustice around humanity. Um, they need to learn when to speak up and when to also not speak up. So a lot of communication throat chakra stuff. And last but not least, the final Starseed Earth mission is retired. Believe it or not, there are some Starseeds, some of you out there who are done. You're done. Congratulations. Fantastic. How exciting. The problem with being retired, probably for the first lifetime ever on planet Earth, is you don't know what to do with yourself. You are tired. You're exhausted. You want to go home. You don't know why you're here. This life has been full of trauma. And you also don't have a clear direction. And all you want to do is like something, but you just don't know what it is. And you start a lot of things, but you don't complete a lot of things. And it's because you're really not supposed to start anything new. You're not supposed to engage in any extra karma here. All right. Um, your purpose as a retired starseed is to clear your karma, typically by repeating cycles, having crazy relationships and lots of childhood trauma. Great. Um, clear. Use the first half of your life to clear all of that karma, to bring everything you've re-experienced into neutrality and then to receive. That's right. You are here to sit back, enjoy, eat all the good food, see all of the beautiful sights, ask for what you want in every aspect of life, and just relax. Just enjoy it. Stop looking for something more than you already have because you've done all of this. You've been there. Okay. You're confused because you don't know what your direction is, but guess what? You're not supposed to have one. You're here to clear your bullshit so that you can move on off of here. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now let's talk about those of you who are in your very last life, speaking of retired, and those of you who are in your very first life on planet Earth. This is exciting. All right. Um, just a little side note with your Starseed Earth mission. Okay. Once again, I deep dive into all of those and so much more, including your cosmic species connection in my book, You're Not Dying, You're Just Waking Up. So please check that out um, if you haven't already read it. It's just super informative. 
Uh, but also, side note, some of you could have chosen all of those Starseed Earth missions in past lifetimes. Like I said at the beginning, some of you are specifically connected to teacher or healer or light warrior. And some of you are like, yeah, I resonate with all of those. Okay. But typically, you are either retired in this life or you have one specific of those of that list Earth mission to align to or none at all. So... Hopefully that narrows it down for you. Um, all right. So yeah, which one are you? Like comment in the chat below. Uh, where do you find yourself? What do you resonate with the most in this lifetime? So last but not least, let's talk about, yeah, where you're at on your cosmic journey, on your contractual journey. So I divided it into 60-40. Now I was really hesitant. I was so close to doing like 80-20. Because I feel like it probably is more 80% are in their last life and 20% of you are in your first life. It's a much smaller percentage. But my hope is all of these starseed kids being born are all in their very first life. And you'll know why that's my hope in a second. Okay, so listen to these symptoms and then comment in the comment box which one you resonate most with. I'll start with your first life, okay? Not your first life ever, your first human lifetime on planet Earth. So, last life and every life before that, you were a galactic being living your best life with all the information and all the technology and all the advancement and all of the, the good stuff. And then you decided to come here. <laughs> And you went through the testing and you figured out your Earth mission. And this is who you're going to be if this is your very first lifetime as a galactic volunteer right now. You're excited to be here. Welcome to planet Earth, cosmic being. You're pumped up. You're ready to go. <laughs> Second symptom, um, you feel more alien than human. Why? Because your very last life was alien. <laughs> All right, number three. Um, you are free of typical human blocks. Are you ever in a conversation with someone and they're explaining their family dynamics or they're explaining their financial dynamics or they're explaining their work dynamics or they're explaining their health dynamics and you're thinking to yourself, I really lucked out. I'm really glad I, I'm unfazed by most of that. Okay. If it's your very first human lifetime here, you are going to be free of typical human blocks. Yay. All right. You don't have a whole lot of baggage is essentially what I'm saying. All right. Next is um, you have a very clear and specific mission. If it is your first lifetime here, then your mission is very clear. I don't know how else to say that. It just, it just is what it is. Okay. Next symptom of your first lifetime here. Uh, you awakened at an early age, right? So either you were born with extrasensory abilities and then you just developed them from there or you had kind of hippie parents and you were able to um, express yourself early in that way often. So but you either way, you awakened early and I would say early is under 30. OK, you awakened early under 30. Um Okay, and the reason why uh, a new star seed to planet Earth would awaken early is because all of that knowledge and access to everything was just in your very last lifetime. So you haven't really been through the treasury of planet Earth, um, essentially. Uh, you also have very high integrity and morality. I tend to find that our integrity and morality tends to break down over the many lifetimes of being a, a human. Um, for myself included and everyone, it's kind of hard not to. And then last but not least, uh, symptom is you're confused or shocked at humanity. And I think that at a certain level, as a starseed in general, yeah, as a brand new starseed, you come to planet Earth and you're like, why isn't anyone talking about this? That's like, that's pretty messed up. And no one seems to be bothered. Star seeds who have been here for a while, the OG, the original volunteers, were like, yeah, that happened like three centuries ago. Like you're, you, you know, you've forgotten, right? The history. So oh, we're just, we're not surprised. We're not shocked. Like, it's like old news, old news. All right. 
if this is your very last life here, I kind of mentioned it within the retirement, um, a couple of these things. If this is your very last life, which means that you've been here for a while, you've been holding it down, you've been volunteered here, you know, you're, yeah, you've been, thank you for being here for that long. Um, you get exhausted often. Don't blame you. It's been a while. You have an urge to go home. Yep. Many traumas and or blocks early in this life. Remember that if this is your last lifetime here and you are in this starseed retirement, then you have had to re-experience a lot of karma in order to clear it, in order to move on, in order to go. Um, okay. Uh, also, you have dedicated your life to emotional healing. Along with the trauma is the dedication to emotional healing. Intrinsically deep down, your soul knows that you need to heal the trauma that happened early in life in order for you to be able to graduate and move on from this planet for good. Um, many directions, but nothing works out. Many directions, but no one that really clicks in. Very similar to the retirement, right? It's like, You've done all the things. You've been the healer. You've been the pillar. You've been the satellite. You've been the rebel. You've been the energy practitioner. You've been the doctor. You've been the herbalist. You've done all the things. And so you're like, I'll take a course in everything only to re-experience it and say, yeah, that's not really my mission. Once again, it's because you've done everything, but there isn't one specific mission for you in this life. You're just supposed to re-experience it, close it off and move on off planet. All right. Um, also, if this is your last life, uh, there's a tendency to awaken later in life, to awaken later in life. Um, yeah. And, and it's just because you're supposed to dedicate yourself to clearing, healing, some of the mental health stuff, the mindfulness stuff, um, before you realize, oh my goodness, I'm an alien. Because if you think, oh my goodness, I'm an alien at like 16, then it's like, well, what do I do with being an alien in a human body? And then you figure it out and you dedicate yourself to that thing. So that's why it's like, you're not supposed to skip over the human stuff if you've been here for a while. It's important. And last but not least, you have given up on humanity. Now, it's, it's, once again, it's a little crash, crass. It's a little harsh. Um, but there's kind of this like feeling of hopelessness. like. Yep, they're just going to do what they want to do. And I'm just here for the show. <laughs> Get your popcorn out. You know what I mean? Like, just a little bit of that. So where do you fall? Do you fall in the very small percentage of, yep, this is my first life and I'm raring to go and like, everything always works out for me? Or, yeah, this life has been shit and I have no idea what I'm doing. And I think I've done all of the Earth missions, but I'm ready to go. Once again, I would say the majority of you fall into this is your last life. Um, one more thing before I close off is personally, I've thought about this whole thing a lot. And I know it's going to sound crazy that I don't know myself, but I am constantly in between the feeling of this is my very first life and this is my very last life. <sighs> I really don't know. And the only reason why is because I'm unsure if all of my past life recall from planet Earth and human and being a human is just imprinted upon my training to be a human or if I really did live those lifetimes. I don't know. How crazy is that that I don't know? It's like so unclear for me. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. But I'm really in between. And that's okay if you are too. Um, yeah, if you want to know more about the Galactic Federation and their messages and the information, please join us for the monthly Galactic Federation summits or check out some of the prior summits. They're all pretty revolutionary and will definitely blow your mind and awaken your DNA. Um, if you want a deeper dive uh, without the ads and censorship free, check out all of my thousand plus videos on my membership site, my website, which you can also sign up for totally free. Um, and once again, if you want to explore more of the Starseed Earth mission and so much more about your awakening journey, check out my book, You're Not Dying, You're Just Waking Up. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, share with your own community, friends, family members who need to hear this. 
and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sending all of you so much love at this time. I hope you feel validated. I hope you feel excited. I hope you feel aligned. I hope you feel seen, maybe for the first time ever, because you're not alone. And this is what this community is for, to reunite starseeds and help all of us remember why we're here so that we can kind of get through this a little bit faster. All right. As always, I will see you, all of you, in the fifth dimension frequency. Bye for now.